Inside Star Citizen kicks off for the year with an exciting new topic. Let's look at rivers, and why I think they will be filled with lava at some point. Not all of them, but like, you know, some of them. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And thanks to my newest patron, Lei. If you've watched my retrospective look at the planetary technology of this game and its development cycle, then you may be surprised to hear that just months later, we are seeing a new addition to the Planet Tech folder. This time, the terrain modification system is going to help solve one of the most frustrating issues with Star Citizen's planets. The planets in this game are, for the most part, procedurally developed on a macro scale. This system limits the team, however, from specifically sculpting individual peaks and valleys down to the meter. This, what seems to be newly developed tool we're seeing here, will allow them to get around that. Basically, the team seems to have built an in-house SimCity terrain building tool. And let me tell you, if you're looking for a good time, that's the market to be in. Really though, this will allow devs to raise, lower, or flatten the ground in a space of their desired size, whether that be a small pond or a large mountain. This is something we've seen in other games where the terrain is voxel based and players can affect the terrain to their pleasure. The tool here seems pretty robust and easy for them to manipulate. It opens up some really great options for locations that are hand placed for players to find and build their outposts on. Which actually brings up a cool detail. There will be very defined and exact terrain flattening brushes to simulate human interactivity, and there will be much more natural organic flattening brushes that blend with the surrounding. It's a great attention to detail and something that I expect to see from CIG. Something else we could see at CIG maybe two years down the line is this being applied to the cave builder as well. And I'm only half joking about that one. As I've said before, many of these tools and background projects are really beginning to show some results from their time in the dark. One of these results is rivers. Rivers are a feature that I've wanted, didn't expect, and honestly don't think we need right now. But the moons have aligned and it seems like river systems may be in line for this year. And I'm not just talking about simple lines of water. We're looking at full, meandering rivers with tributaries and origin springs, a system that pretty creatively determines the lowest point in a certain distance and simulates the water path to that point. A system with water that will not only have buoyancy, but will most likely be used for player features such as power supplies or transportation. There's no reason why we won't see rivers as large as some of the biggest on Earth. During this segment, it was mentioned that if the ground slopes up from a point and the water has no way of going downhill from that point, they will have to come in and change the terrain. I really wish they allowed for lakes and ponds to form at these points and for the water to flow naturally. It was acknowledged that the cumulative amount of water that moves through each node in the river will grow as it would in real life. So we can see clearly that they've left the bones in there for these things like lakes and larger rivers to be built in later. Mark my words, I think we'll see it. It was also noted that the river would be affected by the rainfall. I'm not sure if this was a specific point they were looking to make, but the rivers being affected by precipitation would be incredibly detailed. And it'll be interesting to see if they do decide to do that. A similarly detailed feature, river dense foliage is actually quite easy with the inclusion of the humidity temperature map. But even with the addition of these default sprites being placed down by an engineer rather than an art team, this scene's already looking really impressive. It'll be a joy to see what happens when an actual art team gets their hands on this. And let's consider waterfalls for a second, a feature that's already been confirmed. Going back to this frame of the video, you can see that there's a pretty significant slope where the water goes down the hill. I don't think it would be a waterfall, but maybe a fast moving section of the river. 
Who knows when the effects that might be associated with something like that might be included, but I'll be excited to hear about waterfalls when they do plan to bring them in. Overall, I've got to say, this is pretty cool. I'm seeing some features pop up every few episodes that make me feel like we're back in 2017. It's nice. And this feature is looking gorgeous, especially at more than 20 frames per second. And the big kicker? We've already been told by the environmental art team that lava rivers will indeed be a thing whenever they get it working for water. The same has also been said about waterfalls. Just two years ago, a dev said the key to lava is the key to rivers. Uh, no, like uh, in all seriousness, I guess they want to like liquid lava and stuff, but it's like the same issue as, uh, as rivers, really. Um, it's not something that the Planet Tech before can do right now. Um, we'll hopefully get to that. Um, and here we are. We have rivers. Right after that, another dev explained that this would not simply be a texture change or an FX change, but these lava rivers would be the full experience. And yeah, I mean, yeah. I personally, I think volcanoes and lavas are really, really awesome. I would love to have them. Um, but I think whatever we do next, whether it's more advanced uh, water stuff or lava stuff, we want to make sure that it's uh, a complete experience and not just a visual representation of what lava is doing on the planet and then you walk up to it and then there's a, a like you cannot interact with it or anything so we want to if we add it we want to make sure that it's um, a meaningful meaningful addition uh, beyond just a visual representation of something that looks cool um, we want to make sure that gameplay uh, is involved with it and that we deliver a complete package of like oh this is what it's like to have lava in the game and and in my opinion, that will be the biggest part of creating the atmosphere of Pyro. Who knows, maybe they'll even built in the convective heat transfer. <laughs> I actually do kind of think that'd be cool though. After this river section, we got to hear about the month of January for the combat team. They vaguely hinted at plans for the upcoming year and improving the process and mentioned capacitors, which we're all excited for, but besides that, there was not really much else to this episode that's worth reporting on. So that wraps up this first weekly review of 2021. I have plans for coverage regarding these videos that I'll announce next month, but for now, I'm satisfied with this exciting start. Not so much with how many faces we saw versus the amount of info we got, but I'll give them a pass since we didn't get another 2020 in review episode this time. What do you think of rivers? How about all these water features we're seeing? Buoyancy, rivers, new shaders, and some other things. Do you think we'll see some big water features soon? Boats? Underwater bases? Tell me in the comments, go crazy. And remember to keep an eye out in all of my videos this month for the secret code that will help you win an Anvil Arrow in my monthly giveaway. That giveaway is in the video description, along with my Twitch channel, where I give away multiple ships and play with our Star Citizen community every week. If you'd like to help support what I'm doing or these giveaways, you can support me on Patreon and receive additional perks. Whatever you do decide to do, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.